Please pray with me. Gracious God, thank you for our children. And thank you for loving us the same way. Help us to see your love for us and uh, your love for others and love them too. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, today would be a perfect day uh, for me to talk about stewardship because the readings really pound money today. Uh, But I'm not going to do that. So you're kind of on your own in terms of that. You'll need to pray and ponder stewardship of time, talent, and treasure and know that it's for the church, but even more than that, it's for you. I'm going to talk about that strange Old Testament lesson because it is maybe the most impactful passage of Scripture on my life, period. Strange real estate transaction. The most important passage for me. That tells you how weird I am, isn't it? Doesn't it? It was a long, long time ago. I was working in a church, and uh, I can't remember if I knew it at, at the time or not, but I was about to be fired, which lets you know the situation wasn't good. There's this pending doom that's about to arrive, and um, I found an article by an Old Testament scholar that I like a lot, and it was about hope. And so I said, I need that. And it starts off with this passage. I thought, how am I going to get hope out of this? Jeremiah buys land. And then you start reading it deeper, and there's a whole lot more going on. It's still a simple real estate transaction. It doesn't have these glorious phrases that you want to memorize and, 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 and that, that hold you up like just by the words alone. It is, it is a picture of God. And on a Sunday where we're praying for healing, we need to be clear about who God is. And this one does it for me better than any. The word of God came to Jeremiah in the 10th year of Zedekiah of Judah, blah, 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 all those names, all these details. And it's like, what are these details for? Just tell us about God. Details in the Bible are sneaky, okay? Because we tend to slip into unbelief. We believe God's going to do something spiritual for us in the future, but we have a hard time believing that God's involved in the details today, don't we? The details are given here. And the, uh, there's a disaster coming. Jeremiah's in jail. He's told the king some bad things. The verses that are missing here is, a, is the king talking back to him. You said this is going to happen, and this is going to happen, and this is going to happen, and you're not going to win. But then the word of the Lord comes to Jeremiah again as the siege engines are being built around Jerusalem. The enemy's there, and it's going to fall. I liken it to being a small Eastern European nation that borders Russia, and Russia wants you. And the United Nations isn't going to do anything about it. And you know they're coming, and you see the tanks. It's about over. And if that's the situation, you're not going to invest in real estate, are you? No, you get that? You do not buy land when the Russians are on the border. Well, the Babylonians were on the border. And God comes to Jeremiah in prison and says, I'm going to send your cousin to you, and he's going to offer you this family plot. I want you to buy it. And lo and behold, Hanamel, his cousin, comes, and Jeremiah says, that was the word of the Lord. And so he buys the land. And you read all about it here. Nothing has changed, has it? You sign it in triplicate, and you do this, and you have it witnessed by such and such, you know, and you you have the, the title people come and all that stuff. And then you store it. You put it away so that it's going to be there because there is a time coming when houses and lands, when the details of life will be put back, will be restored by God. So, disaster's about to happen. Judgment from God is about to happen. It hasn't quite happened yet. And God can't handle it. God's already planning restoration. And saying, invest in hope. Invest in hope. This is a healing Sunday, and we're going to be praying. We pray every Sunday, don't we? Isn't prayer an investment 
in hope. Trusting that God's going to act even though right at the moment we're not seeing it. This passage tells us about God. God knows my situation and your situation. God knows if we're in a place of desperateness or darkness or lack. And God's heart is already moved. God's plan is happening. And God wants the details of our lives to be put back in order. I'm going to be inviting any of you to come forward in a few minutes. I would like the prayer team to please come forward. Um, on, on a day where we have a healing service, it's an invitation. If you would like to come forward and be prayed for, come forward, stand or kneel, speak a prayer request if you want. Don't speak a prayer request if you don't want to. You will be anointed and prayed for. For those who don't come forward, I invite you too to be prayerful. Maybe risk hope for people being prayed for and for you. Risk hope and put our hands into the hands, our lives into the hands of God. So I invite you to come forward at this time. And as I said, kneel or stand, share a prayer request if you'd like, be anointed and prayed for.